economic theory says everyone is saving perfectly for retirement. They've all figured out how much they need when they retire, and they've computed the rates of return they're going to earn over their lifetime, and they've saved just the right amount and adjust optimally. And um, then when they do retire, they do the opposite and wind down. You should give and, the example of your father when it comes to retirement, because it's a great example. Yeah, my, my father was an actuary, a much smarter man than me. And when he was re retired, sometime in his 80s, he called me and said, you know, it's bothering him that he's spending more than he's earning. And I said, Dad, you're retired, you know? That's, that's what you do. And uh, I, I knew basically how much money he had. And I said, as, as far as I can tell, you have enough money to last until you're 120. Tell me, what are the odds? You're the actuary. So, <laughs> so you, you can be really smart and find this troubling. And so much of my research over the years has been to figure out a way to help people. So once, once you recognize that investors are humans, and they're not perfect, that means you can help them. So, for example, things like automatically enroll them into uh, pension plans. The UK has run a gigantic experiment. Uh, they introduced a new pension scheme about 10 years ago called NEST. There was a very controversial decision made as to whether this plan should be mandatory or whether it should just use a nudge, which is to automatically enroll people with the option to opt out. Opt out. And uh, Adair Turner, a uh, very smart, uh, distinguished uh, man in the field here, he went with automatic enrollment and enrollment has been over 90%. And they're now in the phase of gradually increasing how much people are saving. The whole thing has been a great success. Now here's the interesting thing. The, we spend in every country billions of dollars subsidizing retirement saving by making it tax free. As best we can tell, that has no effect. And it costs a lot. It, it's free to send people a form that says, you're in unless you're out. So if we're trying to figure out how we should best spend our money and how we should best support retirement, tax subsidies are probably not the most efficient way to do it. Now, something that we've been talking about, something I talk about with some of the people at PIMCO, is the back end of this problem. The which, retirement problem. Re, yeah, which is, okay, now you've reached my age and uh, you're supposed to be figuring out how to make what you have last. If you think about that problem, it's much harder than the accumulation problem, much harder. Because the accumulation problem, you could do reasonably well by saying, okay, I'm gonna set a target, one million, two million, whatever it may be, uh, and, and I'll keep adjusting that, uh, things, see how things go. I can always adjust my retirement age uh, if uh, sooner or later. Oh, and uh, you could do reasonably well with just some simple heuristics like save 12% of your income or something. The other end, whoa, that's a problem that gives the best mathematicians big headaches because you don't know how long you're gonna live. You don't know how long your spouse is gonna live. 
You don't know what the markets are going to do. Juggling it's all time, of that. It's, it's path dependence. It's you don't pa want it. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, you know, for the mathematicians, this is uh, dynamic programming, stochastic dynamic programming problem that is pretty hard. And it's ridiculous to think any human can solve that. And I think the financial services industry is starting to think about this, but we have a lot to do in giving people simple recipes. What they want is to be on an allowance. And here's one interesting note about all of this. As you know, over the last 30 years or so, all around the world we've switched from the old fashioned defined benefit pension plans that come with an annuity to defined contribution plans that have this decumulation problem. Now, here's the irony. People who have those old DB plans love them. But if they're in a DC plan, essentially no one goes out and buys an annuity. And I got roped into this in Chicago last spring the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, one of the world's great symphonies, Ricardo Muti is the conductor. Uh, the orchestra went on strike. They, why did they go on strike? The management was going to take away their DB plan. And what they were giving them was better. And somebody called me and said, look, could you talk to a couple of the members of this orchestra? So I talked to a few of them and I said, you know, look, if you asked me which of these retirement plans I would want to be in, I would take the one that management is offering. And you guys are threatening to destroy one of the world's great cultural organizations and your jobs in order to keep something that isn't as good as what you're being offered. And I explained that if they had that new plan, they wouldn't choose an annuity, but they were fighting to the death to keep one. <laughs>